Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about the importance of ancestors and getting your kids involved with going on a treasure hunt and finding out information about those people that lived before them and that are part of their family. In 1985, my husband and I decided that we were going to get involved with genealogy. We wanted to find out about ancestors. On my side of the family, there had been quite a bit of genealogy done. On his side of the family, not so much. But the one thing that was wonderful about his side of the family is that they had tons and tons and tons of records and pictures. I don't know that my family knew what a camera was for. We hardly had any pictures. <clears throat> so we began this treasure hunt and we told our kids we're going to start gathering information. So with all these amazing, amazing pictures that he had, we began our quest and our journey and our treasure hunt. We involved our kids in it and we made copies of all the pictures of some of the people that we, we didn't know and that my husband didn't know. And we sent these pictures to all of the ancestors across the United States seeking to get more information about these people. As we gathered information about them, the stories, these fascinating stories began to emerge. So once a month, we headed our genealogy week, and on our family night, we talked about our ancestors. We found out a lot of interesting things about them. We found out one of them was an inventor of dustless chalk. Another one was a Lutheran minister in Germany, and then he and his wife came to um, Chicago here in the United States, and one they planned a trip to go back to Germany, and while they were traveling back to get onto the plane, it, there was a terrible accident, and they were killed. There was another ancestor we found that graduated from Stanford University. Another one went to Notre Dame University. We looked in to see if they loved writing or literature, or what were some of their hobbies. Almost every person, both on Mark's, my husband's side of the family, and on my side of the family, they were musicians. They almost all played some kind of a musical instrument. From one ancestor was a, an amazing mandolin player. Another one played the organ and the piano. And there were other instruments, the trumpet, the flute, the oboe. One of them was a singer who actually performed in Carnegie Hall. So we gathered up all of these very, very interesting tidbits of information, and there were some who were writers. They had written poetry. And a lot of them came from large families of 13 children. Some of them had fought in World War I. <clears throat> some of them had fought in World War II. So the information that we gathered was fascinating, and it, what it did for us is it connected us to those people. If you read anything about the importance of connectedness, it's very important that we feel connected to something that is larger than us, that is much larger than us. So what we did is we took these pictures of our ancestors and we had them framed, all these different ancestors. One of our ancestors just happens to be one, <clears throat> the woman, her um, husband kidnapped her children. They were getting a divorce. They had two children. She didn't want, he did not want her to have them. He didn't want them either. So he kidnapped them and he put them in foster homes. And they were in foster homes from the age of about three until they were 17. During that time, they never saw their mother, which was a terrible, terrible thing. This happens to be my mother-in-law. She was the one who was put in the foster home and reunited with her mother at the age of 18. A lot of the laws back then uh, went to the father, not the mother. Here was a picture that we found of one of our ancestors on her wedding day. So these are all kinds of interesting and fascinating stories. Once a year, what we did in December is we had a really special ancestor night. We gathered our kids together and we looked at all the information that we had gathered that year about our ancestors and we talked about them. And we pretended that if we could pick up a phone and ask them a question about their lives and about their hobbies and their interests, their education, about mistakes that they had made, what questions would we ask them? So these are some of the things um, we also talked about looking at all of the qualities of this person. What are some of the qualities that you would like to have that you would like to adopt from this person? 
Look at all the talents that they had in various things between science and music and the arts. Are any of those talents that you feel like you have? So in other words, we were trying to make these connect connections with our ancestors so that we could feel closer to them. So my suggestion to you is get out all of those records. In fact, you can go now, you can have your DNA done. Ancestry.com is a huge, huge um, opportunity for everybody to go on. You can type in your name, you can download tons of information about yourself, about your family, about your ancestors. Many times it's backed many, many generations of information that you'll be able to get. Then start looking at the stories. My husband was interested in the statistical information of when they, when they were born, when they died, where they were born, where they died. I was interested in the stories. I wanted to gather those in. I wanted these people to become alive for ourselves and for our children. You can get a lot of this information on Ancestry, so it's a lot easier than what we were doing back in 1985. And I would highly suggest doing it because then you will feel this incredible connection to those people who have gone before and how they've paved the way for you to have many of the opportunities that you have today. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.